Hi, welcome to Fiber Chats. My name is Irene. I'm the host here. My guest today is Natasha Jackson. And Natasha has been a guest of my channel briefly already. So you are part of Humans of West Needs. And if you guys don't know what Humans of West Needs is, the, this year is going to be the third year. And actually, Martin uh, and I just talked about organizing the third year. So Martin from Need365 blog and I have been doing this collaboration for now the third year where we talk to people who participate in West Needs Mystery Need Along. And Tasha was like one of the people who participated. You were one of my humans. So yeah. welcome, welcome back to Fiber Chats. Thank you. Nice to be back. Today we have, we talk about something that has zero connection with Stephen West <clears throat> or the mystery need alone. Today we're going to be talking about you specifically. And you do all kinds of crafts. Uh, and actually I'm like blown away every time I look at Instagram. There is like another shawl and another top. And I, I, and I know that you're super busy working at Tuft. So we're going to talk about like your craft journey. Tell me a little bit like when you started Knitting, I know you're crocheting. Okay. When did it all start? So knit rise. I started to knit around oh my life. I was probably 16, so 19 years ago. Um like he's my age away now, doesn't it? <laughs> um and literally it was the person that I was with at the time, his nan used to knit, and her name was Pearl, and she oh she was a fab fabulous lady, and I used to sit and watch her knit. And I sort of got into knitting a little bit, didn't really know what I was doing, and um, went to the local yarn shop, got some needles, yarn. That was it, really. Just started to teach myself and learn to actually knit. I didn't want to knit scarves. I didn't want to knit hats. It just did not interest me. I actually learned to knit through 3D formats of, like, animals. Um, and that, that was it. Just caught my interest. And that was 19 years ago. And that's how I got into the knitting side. Um, and then I started to do jumpers and then shawls just took my fancy. That was it. I wanted to know everything, found Stephen West and that that was it for my knitting side. And then the crochet side, I didn't know anything about crochet until I actually learned from Kerry from Toft. Um, it was an interview day. I went there, I brought a book and some yarn and that was it. I had no idea how to crochet before. And that's literally how I got to learn to crochet. I got the book, watched her videos and, and started to crochet. She's a wonderful instructor. By the way, if you guys don't know, so Carrie is the owner of Tuft and I interviewed her on my channel. You can watch her interview. I'll put the link to it. But she's a wonderful, wonderful instructor because she makes it look so easy. She explained like literally step by step of how to make those animals. And yeah. now it's an enormous collection of animals. So it's super fun. You can find like all yeah. things. And not only animals, there is uh, human figures, there are dragons and all, all kinds of things. Yeah. Tell me about working in Tough. Like it's such a creative environment and there is so much going on. How do you balance it with your knitting life? Like when do you find time to knit? <laughs> So I'm so lucky. My my basic job is a designer maker. I crochet every single day for my job. I'm really lucky. So I get that crochet fix through that. So my knitting is more the nighttime side when I'm home. Um, so that's how I sort of get that balance and not making like my hobby, my job, my job, my hobby. I get that balance through that. So that's literally how I balance it out. Right. Um... Well, right now you decided to participate and this is the third time you're doing something like this, but you decided to participate in raising money for Birmingham uh, Children's Hospital. Tell me a little bit, like, why is this mission important to you and why? Did, how did you decide to involve the meters in that? So the Birmingham Children's Hospital side of it is that my nephew um, was born with a really rare heart condition. Um, I can't pronounce it. <laughs> um, and he is based at that hospital. He gets treated there regularly and um, sort of keeping up on his meds, all of that sort of thing. Um, 
And then my dad and myself and my brother-in-law decided at the time that we wanted to sort of do something to help raise money to try and give something back to the hospital um, to try and say thank you really for what they've actually done for him and my sister. Um, so the first year we decided to climb Snowdon at night time, how do you do? Um, the last year we did the West Highland Way walk. Um, and then this year, yeah, we're doing our next challenge, which is the Sahara Desert. So that's literally how it all came around, is just to try and help raise money to say thank you really more than anything. So what's the challenge is going to be like? Tell me a little bit <laughs> more about it. So it will be in March next year and it will be a trek through the Sahara over its seven days travel, but five days in the Sahara. Um, so you'll travel so many miles a day, stop, camp overnight, um, and then basically, yeah, that's that's it really, <laughs> in hot, very high heat. Have you ever been to Sahara? No. <laughs> so, okay. I'm, I'm really excited, but a little bit nervous at the same time, because I don't need, really know what to expect, but we'll, we'll give it a go. Tell me, like, what scares you about this challenge and what excites you about this challenge? Oh, it's just the unknown it's it's just not your everyday area is it um and I fry in heat really bad <laughs> so that for me is yeah going to be the hardest challenge is going to be the heat I think but yeah how, but how do you even prepare for something how do you even prepare for something like that heat wise I have no even idea no idea but the walking side is just keeping up our regular walking going for really really long walks um last year when we did the um scotland the walk there our average mileage was anywhere between 15 to 24 um miles a day so for the mileage i think we'll be okay but the heat wise i just think it's just as you get there you just have to get used to it and have other people done this walk like are you looking into what their tips and tricks about it yeah so we get given guides we get given we will be with another group of people so it's not just us so like you'll have an experienced guide you'll have like someone who's medically trained with you as well um so you're just not out there on your own um so they give you all the packs they give you all the preview things to look at um and then you have to obviously sign all the paperwork as well um and that's it that's it really it's just yeah. And looking into other people's videos who've done it who've been there reading sort of blogs and what they've experienced really what to do and what not to do right well i i follow you on instagram and if you guys don't you you should so your instagram handle is what peeping ghost it's, yeah yeah peeping ghost you want to explain why <laughs> <laughs> so and loads of people always ask me this when I'm at shows and other places, like, what on earth, where does the name come from? So it originally, I used to design, I, I was trained in women's wear, um, design and applied arts, like fashion textiles. And when I trained, I did a collection, it's Peep and Goat. Um, and after that, the name just literally stuck, that, that just literally stuck to everything I designed, all the prints I made and sold. It was, that, that was it really. Right. So yeah, I thought I'd just... So you you know what to do. You go on Instagram, you follow Tash, and you check out your posts. So the latest posts, you've been posting a lot of like really beautiful goodies. There is yarn, there are project bags, there's like all kind of their toft kits. Tell me about like that idea, how to involve the knitters into that fundraising and what can they do to help you and what can they expect in return? Okay. So the idea came around sort of, I would say six months ago. Um, I really wanted to do, obviously help raise the money again, ready for next year. But we did it last year and I wanted to try something different. So by na being able to do, um, it will be on crowdfunder. By able to do like buying a ticket amount and then that allows you to get so many entries um, to give something back as well. Even though people are donating, it's nice to be able to give that back as well both ways um so i contacted those of really really incredible beautiful uk um sort of people who work in the yarn industry and all of that um and asked if they would kindly like to take part in it and donate something um and like you said it's people project bags yarn notions it's it's the whole lot um 
so the way it will work is I have a little link that's on my Instagram at the top of there that will take you through to Crowdfunder. There's five categories in total. Um, they range from five pounds up to 50 pounds. Um, and each one has allotted entries tied to that donation. Um, and then after that, once the draw closes on the 20th of September, all the data will be given to me. And then we'll do a sort of random generator number. Once your number's been picked, it, it'll go to the pile. I'll look at the list and see who that is. And then, yeah, you get allocated a prize. And is, is that open only to the UK residents or is it worldwide? No, worldwide. I wanted to be able to do it all over. So that just means that people can get involved from anywhere. So yeah, absolutely not. Not the UK, just all over, all over. So yeah. And I'm going to put all this information in the description of this video. So for those of you who are not on Instagram, you don't have to go on Instagram and follow and uh, find that information. It's going to be right in the description of this video. So you can click and it's really simple. I Ask me how I know I did it. So you just click on the thing and it gives you five options and you pick the option that you want and uh, you can pay with your Apple Pay or PayPal. It's like, it's super easy. Yeah. So that information is going to mm -hmm. be there. Tell us a little bit about the kids that you received like what's uh what prizes are there okay do you want me to show you some sure I would love that okay okay so all of the people who are included in the prize draw I've actually you know they're my friends I have brought from myself I've supported over the nine years of doing shows um oh my life is I've got them on a bit few on my desk okay so um if anybody knows I'm an absolute sucker for a project bag um, <laughs> <laughs> everyone who knows me laughs about it um the hide and hammer and um, new from hide and hammer kindly donated one of the ice dye bags which is this one okay. um and i have about five of these um so new and her team like ice dye all of those um and they make them all in-house so they're really really special there's none that are the same they're all totally different so that's one of them. Um, and then, oh, this is a really beautiful one. So I think that some people may have seen these on social media. Um, they're sort of popping up a little bit more now. Um, so they are from Geometry. So it's one of the yarn cocoons. I was just looking at that thing. It's absolutely brilliant idea. And you can probably that's put like more than one ball of yarn in there. Like if you're doing fair aisle. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So I've been... Um, doing a project with my hair at the moment so when I go walk in I put it in mine um so I've got an orange one but this is one of these and this is from um Amy she has a hand dye yarn company called um I'll just I'll hold up the bag so there you go so Amy she donated that one which was really beautiful then yarn wise on oh my life so much and um, so the company um, Sakami um, donated a huge box of like seven skeins, but I only got a couple of them out. So if you can see these, so they're all all different bases. And as soon as it came, I did say to Martin, "These are your colours," because <laughs> I know he likes the blue. Yeah, yes, yeah, so it's anything from DK weights on all different and um, sort of by the bases as well so you've got like a blue face Leicester a merino and I believe this one's like an alpaca base yeah and then another favorite one so I've just done some sample um knitting for the knitting shed and they kindly donated a kit oh this is so perfect they're awesome. awesome they're so beautiful and then obviously Kerry <laughs> um I was like, oh, I just want one, just one prize is totally fine. And she was like, absolutely not. Like you can have, just go for it. And um, so I picked out some of my favorites. Um, so normally at the, we do workshops at Natural History Museum. Mm -hmm. And one that we did last year was the Darwin doll, which as soon as she said she was doing it, I was like, I need to be there. I want to go and work it. Like, cause Natural History Museum for me is a really special place. And as soon as she said Darwin, I was like, yes, perfect. <laughs> um, and she actually has given one of the Darwin kits away, um, which you can't get anywhere else. They only are through 
the museum when you go there. Um, so it's to make. Let's see if I can hold these up. Oh, so you get the full kit for those. Um, and then the other favourite that I have is, oh, I'll just grab it from down here. So I learned to crochet from Toft itself, and it's one of the best things I ever did, um, is learning through it. And I wanted to be able to gift that same thing to somebody if they win it and have that same experience. So Edward's Menagerie book is how I learned to crochet. That's literally it. And that will come with Natasha the Two Toad Sloth kit. <laughs> so every team member who works for Toft is an animal. Um, and I am the Two Toad Sloth. Kerry picks that <laughs> one for me. Um, and then you also get my patch as well with it. So that's, yeah, that's just a couple of prizes. But in total, there is just over 20, I think, now. That's so cool. Are you going to have, like, super hard time parting with those? Yes. I've already said <laughs> no, that. I would... <laughs> yeah. It's one it's... of those things that, like, you see it and you want it all for yourself, basically. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, 100%. So people will have time until September 20th to sign up for this and like support you in your work, but also be eligible to win those prizes, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then on the September 20th or like after September 20th, you're going to have the drawer? Yeah. So as soon as it closes on the 20th, then attend, they will send me all of the data and then it will be sort of 21st, 22nd around that. I'll do the draw. So I just want to make sure it's I've got all the data and then it's ready to go. And then what I'll do is I'll post um, on Instagram, just say, I've got it, it's ready. And then I'll do, yeah, I'll do the draw then. Right. Just so to make sure I've got everything there. Well, I'm so glad that you shared all this information with us. And I hope you guys can support Natasha in her journey mm -hmm. and support that wonderful cause. Um, if you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button because that helps my channel to be shown to other people who like similar things. And I'm gonna put all the pictures of those uh, prizes that you've seen here after we're done talking. So you can look up close and see it like in better light and just get better idea what you can win. Thanks so much for being my guest today and sharing your story. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice to be back. And the very best of luck to you in the Sahara. I hope it's going to be super fun and you're going to come out a uh, very seasoned traveler. I know, I know. It's going to be, I'm going to document it all and I'm taking my knitting. So, how many uh, are you bringing that uh, the bowl looking bag with you? Not that one. It'll probably be a small like hide and hammer one so I can roll it up and shove it in my bag so it's really compact i'm waiting to see some pictures of you and camels though <laughs> <laughs> we do actually have two traveling with us <laughs> well thanks so much Des. thank you for being thank me. you thank you so much <laughs>